Okay, today we'll be having two speakers, Jude's and Aisha, both product designers. They'll be coming to give us a talk on Web3 and the blockchain, a deep dive into Web3 and the blockchain. Some of us might already know what Web3 is, but today we're going to be hearing more about it from our speakers. So let's just hold on a little for them to come on board. I think I saw Aisha before, but I can't see her anymore. She hasn't joined the meeting yet. Okay, yes, 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 she's here. Hello, Aisha. Please, if you're present, can you... Hello, on your Joanne. mic and reach out. Hello, I say. How are Hello, you? Good doing? evening. Good Keep, evening. I am fine. How are you? <laughs> thank you for this meeting and thank you for <laughs> reaching out. Um, oh my saying? Oh my gosh. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for coming on time. Since you're here first, let's just begin with you today. All right, no problem. Okay. Uh okay, so first of all, you already introduced me as a she. That's very interesting. Um, yes, no, you are carrying it. Yeah. You you be no. <laughs> all right. Um no, it's fine, it's fine. I think probably the name cost it. So my name is Isa. Yeah. I'm a product designer who specializes in web three products. So um, I've deliberately avoided saying I'm a Web3 designer because of there has been a lot of backlashes lately about um, who are this set of guys calling themselves Web3 designers, who are this ones calling themselves, is it different from normal product design? So to avoid a lot of bad flows, because we've been trying to explain a lot and I don't really have energy. So I'm a product designer that specializes in Web3 products. Hope that's safe enough for everybody. So um, today we are going to talk about like a deep dive into Web3, what Web3 is, what it holds, and what is the future of Web3 basically. So a lot of this talking was really meant to be done by Druid, but I really don't know why he hasn't joined. So I'll Who thinks I never did yes, yes. <laughs> This man is a scout. <laughs> All I right, like so, your new hairstyle. Thank you, thank you. Na, 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 na small, small misbehavior. My mama is in full support, so I'm good. She ah. loves the hair. She will help me get the style itself. Now she ah. said, like the style. Ah, which happened to her? Oh, man, no, no. I swear, I'm not sure that my mama is likely testing possessor or something. I'm never sure. We will find out later. Maybe if you wake up now, they don't cut the hair. <laughs> All right. So I think I'll teach that. So let me quickly share my screen. And I'll walk you through a very quick um, slide and an introduction into Web3. Then uh, our second speaker kind of carries on with the program. So can you see my screen? OK, thank you. We did see him, we did see him. All right. So this slide was actually a template gotten by Samuel. I kind of started working on the slide like an hour ago. Had a very busy week, so I didn't really have enough time to like open it. So it's just a very, very quick summary of things. So I had to like leave his name here for reference. And I'm not gonna steal somebody's design and not give honor to honor with you. So this was done by Sam. Thank you very much for the slides and the templates. So this is going to be a deep dive into Web3, what it is and how it has grown. Uh, okay. And Sam did not prototype it. So I'll just walk through the normal figma. Sorry, people should not be angry. So can you see my screen? Can you see my screen? Yes, yes, uh, we can see it. All right. So what is Web3? 
Web3 basically um, is named some technologies have given to the idea of a new kind of internet service that is built using decentralized blockchains. So the term has been around for years. It's something that has been on for years. And it just came into limelight, let's say, over the last one, two, three years ago, but with major emphasis on the last two years. Now, it has been defined and the internet owned by the builders and the users, which is orchestrated and heavily backed by something we call tokens. So what are the forms of Web3? Web3, um, those involved in Web3 have kind of envisioned Web3 to have taken many forms, including decentralized social networks. This can be play to end video games that reward players with cryptocurrencies or NFTs on the platforms that allow people to buy and sell fragmented digital uh, culture. The more idealistic ones say Web3 will transform the internet as we know things, upending the traditional gatekeepers and ushering in a new middleman free digital economy. So to really understand Web3, we kind of have to understand what Web2 was all about. If I go to the next screen, Web2, Web1. So let's forget the whole big grammar. It's more like when you use an app, you see version one, version two. So when, so let's call it version one. So the first version of the web that we called web one, web version one, was more of a blogging kind of interface whereby the web was strictly information driven, whereby it is where you come, you view information, you view content, you consume, digest it, and you live. The world moved from our conventional newsletters and magazines into the digital space. So now they were digitalizing newspapers. Instead of having it as hard copy, you can take it wherever you're going. Now that was how the website was. That was from the early 1990s down to the early 2000s. Then from 2005 or so, or thereabouts, Web 2 came, that's Web version 2. Now that was more centered around users' participation, engagement, and involvement in the web activities. Hence the growth of social platforms like Facebook, Reddit, and a lot of others. So it kind of started, you know, like we are product designers or as product designers, we kind of prioritize users. And one thing we've known about users is there is evolve, there's evolution, there's growth. There's this want for more and improvement. And that's how the web also improved. So having web to made big parties like Facebook, Twitter, um, and a host of others kind of benefits of the system by having a centralized um, means of handling our data and how we actually interact with websites. So that led to a lot of profiting from these big firms as we know it. Then Web3 now evolved. So Web version 3 is more like the internet, but this time around not governed by a company or a centralized body, but this time around owned and managed by the users. So it takes the power from the centralized body and gives that power to the users. And these users now benefit and receive profits in terms of token. So remember when we had like web soon, we had big firms and big companies like Facebook that earn from selling your um, your data for ads and other services. But this time around, you as the owner, you can actually own your data, own your own web space, and you can try to monetize it. So we'll go deeper into that and I'll explain a bit about it. So why are so many people talking about Web3 all of a sudden? Part of it is usually like the cocktail hype of marketing and fear of missing the in so-called next big thing. Nobody wants to miss out. That's why now Web3 is in everybody's mouth. A lot of people have no idea what Web3 is. 
but they do not want to miss out. So they kind of, everybody took it. Out. So, but the Web3 boom also reflects the amount of capital, talent, and energy that is pouring into crypto startups on the heels of years long crypto boom market. Venture capital firms have more than about $27 billion in crypto related projects in 2021 alone, which is more than 10 previous years combined. And much of the capital has gone into Web3 products, which some big tech companies like on Twitter now and Reddit have started trying to experiment with their own Web3 projects. So a glimpse of what Web3 is. Today, for example, Facebook makes money by aggregating users' data and selling targeted ads. A Web3 version of Facebook would allow users to monetize their own data or even earn crypto tips from other users by for, po for posting interesting content. Remember I said Web2 was owned by a centralized company, but involved people were allowed to engage and involve themselves in the internet. But this time around, we own it. And now we can decide to sell our data to monetize it for ourselves. Or for both guys that post content, although that is already done in Web2 space, like you get to see the likes of TikTok and Instagram for people who post, you get to reward them. But this time around, you get to own your content. You can post and you can also get money from it. So, but let's go deeper. In Web3 Spotify, can allow fans to buy stakes in upcoming artists, effectively becoming patrons in the exchange of percentage of their streaming royalties. A Web3 Uber, for example, could be owned by the drivers on the network. So basically, a basic premise of Web3 is that every product is simultaneously an investment opportunity. Because remember, the whole idea is to reward or incentivize the users through tokens for their engagement and participation in the activities of the web. So, hopefully so now we'll go into more examples of Web3 monetization. So an example I'll give is Axie Infinity. And that's a video game developed by a Vietnamese company, Sky Mavis, which uses NFT and Ethereum-based cryptocurrencies to reward players with real money for achieving game objectives. So in the game now, players can break characters called axes, use them into battling other players. They can also collect virtual lands in the form of NFTs, and they can earn a type of digital money called smooth love potion. And this can be traded in the real world. There is this statement people make, and they said, why play a game for free when you can play to earn? I remember when I was younger, what am I saying when I was younger? Oh, till now. It's just that probably because of work, I don't really have as much time to play games anymore. So I remember then when I played like, like a madman, I had so much money in, okay, cheat self was involved in grand theft that I would see the amount of money I had, both from the people that I beat on the road and collected their money on. Once I collected their cars, beat them to collect their money. Once I stole, however I might have been, I had a lot of money in from Grand Theft. I know growing up, I used to wish that I wish I can just withdraw this money like God will help me. If I can just touch this money, I'll be able to Like imagine seeing your game, you have $1 billion, and in real life, in your pocket, you have 100 naira. Like it did not just work. But Web3 comes to kind of bring in that, um, that dream and aspiration that we had into reality. For example, like the reason why I gave this Axie Infinity as an example, there are a lot of other um, game five products. But imagine playing the game you earn, and that Grand Theft Auto, I earned something called, let's say, GTA tokens. Those my GTA tokens can be worth maybe 0 0.000 GT for one um, dollar for one GT. I'm actually verifying with it. Imagine earning in that game and using my rewards and being able to trade it on an exchange or a DeFi, a decentralized exchange, into USDT or other stable tokens that can now be converted into reward value. That would be great. Right. That would be very awesome. That's one of the examples of the user being rewarded by the property platform and not just being a contributor. So another example is Helium. Helium is basically a crypto-powered crowdsourced wireless network. 
where people can share their bandwidth from their phone or office Wi-Fi with the Helium network using a special kind of device plugged into their computer or router. In exchange, they receive Helium tokens by the nearby device or bandwidth that's like by the nearby device or bandwidth that kind of like use their network. So in a in long story short, for well, those people that used to say, I beg, help me on hotspots, they on the Wi-Fi, help me with this. May I just sharply connect your hotspots. You get to earn tokens by sharing your data, by sharing your bandwidth. So instead of, okay, I subscribe to MTN or to Glow, and Glow does all the earnings, why don't I earn from it too? These are one of the ways where players kind of been monetized. Um, so basically, by sharing your data alone, you actually earn from it. So I'll do a bit of explaining of some things um, as regards some other examples of Web3. So Web3 now isn't just only in terms of the monetization. There are a lot of examples and a lot of life-changing activities that Web3 kind of brings in place. Now, the reason why the monetization aspect is one of the most popular aspects of Web3 is because Web3 was driven by tech, powered by greed, before user experience came in place. There's a reason why I said powered by greed. Now, 90% of the people who start or want to use Web3 products come into Web3 because they know, oh, you can make money from it. Or if you have this token, and or guys are cashing out in crypto, on Twitter crypto. So they don't even know they are entering Web3, but they just know they are entering crypto. That's why you can have a lot of shitty products or some products that have some terrible experiences, terrible user interfaces. But we really don't care. We are more interested about what we get to benefit from the system. So now, a man that has something to benefit from a product would go the extra mile to actually learn the product. Now, does that balance user experience? You know, user experience is meant to give a user a seamless product to solve his task or to carry out his task to solve his problem. But mm -hmm. it's when a product is driven by technology, it's the other way around. Users get to learn the product. Now, because it is powered by grid, we have no problem learning it. But this now gives us one major problem. And the major problem is adoption there will be very, very, very low adoption rates in the sense that people now tend to believe Web3 is difficult or it's rocket science or it's something that is built for geniuses. But the truth is actually Web3 is just a decentralized version of Web2. Now, yes, there are obviously difficult terms. There are obviously difficult things, but for every niche of every um, physically product, whether be it fintech, be it e-commerce, they have their terms and they have um, their features. I'll put in that simple term. Yeah. So for example, if I tell you what's a cart, I had no idea what the cart was until I started using an e-commerce store. Now, it was something that was very easy to understand. Yes, you are to cart because you know you're going to check out. It didn't take too long to understand, but still I had to understand it the system made it easy for me to understand. Now, that's one of the problems Web3 are facing, but we'll come into the user experience part of Web3. But for now, people came into Web3 because of the monetization aspect. But a lot of things can be done on Web3 that are life-changing. So um, I'll give an example, then I'll move on. Um, there's a product a friend of mine, myself and a friend of mine are working on. So like a very interesting product. He was one, he, he, I don't know how he thought of it, but it was a very nice product. And it's a product to help folks that have probably passed away or passed away and lose their funds. So for example, I know if I say the statement now, my mother will shout plenty of it. But if I die, for example, a lot of my crypto assets will be lost. Can be lost in liquidity pools, or if it's in a centralized exchange, it can be lost, lost in the exchange without necessarily knowing um, what I have or anybody having access to what I have. It happens a lot with people that have money in the banks and the rest. We've had a lot of folks that probably pass on and the money in their bank get lost forever. But this time around, you have a product where you can get to 
um, link all your centralized and decentralized exchanges. I would explain those terms. Centralized exchange is just like a regular Binance. It's still governed by some set of people where you can get to buy, sell, and convert your tokens from one point to another. So that's technically not Web3, but that's just a blockchain product that you can carry out activities for the blockchain. I don't know a better way to explain it to somewhere like Binance. Now, Binance is kind of like a hybrid. It's centralized and decentralized at the same time because you have the centralized aspect of it. But I'll not compete with it. So we have decentralized and decentralized product. So you can be able to link your centralized and decentralized and all your protocols, all your investments into one platform that is, for example, someone passing away. We get to trigger a smart contract that alerts dependence of the death and you can actually get people to claim those assets in depending on the percentage that you've given it. So that's something that is going to help a lot of lives and help a lot of families in case of, of impending doom or impending activities. There are still a lot of other ways that the blockchain can be used to help lives, not necessarily in the um, financial aspect. Now, yes, you can monetize things, but I will not go into that aspect because the monetization aspect of this product is where my guy is going to make his money from. So I'm not open. So um, doors before we launch, but wait for the launch and it's coming. So now we'll go into different forms of Web3. But the two major forms right now are the DAOs and the DeFi's. So what are DAOs? So DAOs stand for decentralized autonomous, autonomous organizations. So in the purest form, DAOs are a group are groups that form a common purpose, like investing in a startup, managing a stable coin or buying a bunch of NFTs. They are basically governing bodies that oversee the allocation of resources tied to the projects that are associated with, and they are tasked with ensuring long-term success for the project. So it's just like, in a typical sense, majority carries the vote. So the way DAOs work is that when DAO is formed, it is run by the members, and often through the use of crypto tokens, they often come with a setting rights attached to the tokens that allow, such as the ability to manage the common treasury or vote on some decisions. So like I said, in our traditional like primary school sense, we have something called majority currency vote. When we are like, um, should we play ball today or we should play video game? For example, a couple of people say, let's play ball. A couple of people say, let's play video game. Say, okay, how many people? One, two, three. Ah, majority currency vote. Now, this might not be the most perfect example I can use to explain it down, but I'm trying to go as simple as possible for the people like, that do not necessarily understand the concept and for those that kind of understand the concept of things so can actually carry it along. So basically, a DAO, everybody that owns, um, let's say, the asset of a particular protocol that is running on a DAO has the ability or a voting right based on the percentage ownership of the assets of that protocol to be able to make decisions or vote basically for the product. There are a lot of companies that work on DAOs. One of my favorites is Compound. Um, there's the Olympus DAO and there are a couple of others, but we'll go deep down probably if there is time. Maybe our other host can actually explain a lot of things. Then the next common type of Web3 or face of Web3 is the DeFi. So DeFi is basically a short for decentralized finance. It's an umbrella term for the part of crypto universe that is geared toward building the internet native financial system using the blockchain to replace traditional um, intermediaries third parties in handling financial transactions. You and means that you need some intermediaries like a bank or stock exchange in order to feel comfortable 
in the DeFi, it doesn't mean you're replaced by software. Instead of transacting through banks or stock exchange, people trade directly one another pair to pair with the blockchain. I don't, it's a way of making market certain entries and, entire, and, and ensuring the entire process is fair and trusted. Um, so there are a lot of DeFi protocols. Um, we have the lending platforms. Example, you have your Aave, you have your Compound, that basically incentivizes users for lending their assets. So instead of, uh, I don't have crypto on my hand, or, or I have crypto, I don't want to sell. Now, a lot of us say, oh, shit, especially when crypto is deep in, ah, I don't want to sell. Instead of selling, why not just go to a lending and borrowing protocol? You actually borrow from the protocol. You stick your assets. Then when you are done, you can do your business, do whatever. You pay your borrowed amount and you collect your asset back. Just like your normal, yeah, you go and meet your guy, get out to borrow money. Okay, you borrow, it gives you interest. Also, for putting in your token, you earn interest. But I'll not go too deep into that. We have indexes. For, so, for example, for some indexes, um, you have you have set tokens. You have options. You have vaults. You have arbitrages. You have sticking pools. You have vaults. You have swaps. You have launch pools. You have launch pads. So there are a lot of DeFi protocols or DeFi features. Basically, crypto people are building their own version of Wolf of Wall Street. One large decentralized and deal exclusive in crypto markets with crypto versions of many products offered by the traditional firms, but now in a decentralized manner. So I think I'll stop here. So I'll just speak, I can speak. If there is, once it's done, and I'll be open for, room for questions, please. Which one be okay. one you never Thank you so much. Yeah. That Hello. is our floor is yours. Thank you very much, Aishi. Thank you. Uh, we have some questions for you. Some people dropped some questions. No, no, not me. Murphy has not spoken. I don't have anything to say. We have okay. said everything okay. now. What is your make I talk No, you still have... everything. <laughs> this is not our agreement. <laughs> I don't even know All how right. we Because it's not that I've said everything I need to talk about. <laughs> okay, maybe you answer questions now. Oh, yeah, yeah, now. yeah I do have questions. I can't show my face. I'm actually asked for a friend's birthday dinner. Right? I had to come to the car so I could, I could take this call. Right? I'm sure the food will soon finish and I have to run back so they don't finish everything. Hmm. More than <laughs> It's all right. All right, so what are the questions? Okay, okay. okay. So, okay, someone <laughs> asked, how can a UI UX designer benefit from Web3 and the blockchain? You make money. You make money. <laughs> How? <laughs> a lot of... Okay, now, so for example, just like every trend, there is a lot of rush of tech talents. Um, as of two years ago, three years ago, there was this massive rush into the fintech space, whereby a lot of users or a lot of CEOs wanted to start building fintech products, just like designers are rushing into a niche. So, so in, um, CEOs and company orders are rushing into a niche. So trust me, we are not the only ones wanting to go. There is high demand. That's why we are rushing, or that's why we wouldn't know about it. So now the first is there's a lot of money to be made because there are a lot of opportunities. The second is a lot of crypto projects. I don't say lots, but the kind of pay more now, I'm very careful by saying pay more because there are a lot of Web2 products that pay this money. I have like guys that earn crazy. Like they earn crazy even more than we in the Web3 space on the normal Web2 product. So conventionally, there's money everywhere. But because of the high demand, there's a lot of opportunities in the blockchain space. So you can make money as a UI UX designer on the blockchain space. Okay. Thank you. Uh, there's another question, though. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Before you go to the next question. Yeah. So apart from making money, right, you get to work on a lot of interesting things. Um, I think the main reason I actually left designing traditional products, traditional in this sense basically means 
any product that's not Web3. Uh, it was getting very boring. When they say do FinTech app, it's usually the same UX templates. When they say design a website, it's actually getting boring. So if you're a kind of person like me that uh, you don't like getting bored, you work on a lot of, a lot of interesting things, too many inter interesting things to work on. Yeah, so um, I mostly transitioned from being a product designer. Yeah, like I said, mentioned, there's this whole drama about calling yourself a Web3 designer, right? But just putting that title on my portfolio, I've gotten contracts worth a lot of money, right? So despite the whole chat talk, clients to come and meet you because you have Web3 designer in your bio. Yeah, so you get to work on a lot of interesting things. You get to work on games. I'm working for a very, I can't even give much details, but the company I'm working for right now, it's probably my dream company, right? Because they do contracts for Google, Microsoft. They do contracts for most of these big blockchain companies, right? And I get to work on all of these things, right? So if you're looking for a place where you grow very fast and you want to work on a lot of interesting things, then Web3 is for you. Then, like I said, mentioned, money and freedom, right? I think I was in the call last week where my boss sent me a message on Saturday saying he wants me to come to Dubai the next day and stay in Dubai for like two weeks to cover the whole cost. Right. This is something a fintech company will not offer me. Right. Or most of them will not offer that. And I was even in Shakara. I couldn't even travel. I told him that I cannot travel for like this very short notice. This is Saturday. If you want me to travel on Sunday, I'm in Nigeria. I have to apply for a visa and arrange my suitcase and do all that. Then he said, okay, come before March 8th. Come before April 8th. But I can't do April 8th. Right. So now I'm negotiating when I should go to Dubai. I think another one they invited me to New York around May or so. Right. So you get to travel a lot, right? We are doing remote work, but most of them want to fund your traveling. I have another trip in Paris in July, a different company sponsoring that. So you get to travel, work, work a lot of interesting things, and <laughs> you live your dream life if you are very good at what you do. Okay. Thank you. I have 30 questions for you. Okay, next one is, how, if I want to transition into the blockchain industry as a UIX designer, how can I go about this? Do I need to learn how to code? Is it necessary? <laughs> not at all. <laughs> I, can't, I can't write shit code. Not at all. You don't need to know how to code. You don't need to learn. Other, I think there's this, I think, I don't know, I think Joseph Brendan made this post about design not being enough. And ideally, I would not quote those kind of um, tweets, right? But I had to quote it. Just being a designer is enough for you. Right. You can choose to be a product designer, then start learning things that would complement your product design skill. It can be illustration, 2D illustration, can be 3D, can be motion, can be game design. Right. But you just stack up on your product design skill. So that way you have a very deep knowledge or extensive knowledge of design. You don't need to know how to write a single line of code to make money. Right. I make enough money for myself and I don't know how to write code. Right. I, the time I spent learning how to do Flutter, learning HTML and CSS. If I actually put that time into design, right, I think I'll be a better designer. So instead of wasting your time learning how to write code, you can focus on being a designer. Because in events, you learn how to write code. And you're also a very good designer, right? They are very rare. But most times, when they get to work for companies, especially Nigerian companies, they'll get exploited in the sense that they want to do the work of both a developer and a designer, right? And they only pay double salary. Because the idea is, if you are paying your designer 10K, you are paying your developer 10K, and you want me a hybrid that can design and code to work for you. Ideally, I would expect you to pay me 20K, but you also want to pay you 10K. So now you're doing the work of two people and earning the salary of one person, right? So it's not better you do the work of one person and earn the salary of one person. That way you have less work and you earn more money, right? So probably I say have something to say on that. The only thing I can add is you have less work to do more work for other people. So you can actually work and down. <laughs> okay thank you okay next question what are the resources you can recommend to help a ui ux designer in this field in web3 trying to transition into the web3 space what do you want to go ah uh, the, the only thing i always see the only thing i always see is learn how to use web3 products right I don't think there's any shortcut to it. It's basically just using the products, learning how they work, then attempt to redesign or something. But you know, you have to know how the product works. Because most times when you get, you are very lucky, right? Probably they don't need a Web3 designer or they just need a pro designer. And you don't need to have prior knowledge of Web3. 
if you don't know how that space works, probably you are working in a lending space, a game space, an insurance space, or whatever Web3 niche you are working on, right? When you get thrown into that role, for the first for the first, second, third week, you're usually very confused. You're in meetings, they are seeing a lot of things. You open the Figma space, you're not even sure how the product should work because you have no idea how that protocol is supposed to work. So the first, the first thing will be for you to use this product, have a good idea of the basic mechanics of how they work, then probably dive into uh, the product white paper. Right? For you to design a good product, you need to know how it works. So use the product, just keep experimenting you get to see a lot of a lot of things there right? the more you keep experimenting the wider your your knowledge bank becomes right and you are more articulate and you can contribute to meetings right so the best thing i always say is use this product and get familiar with them okay so it's and just Actually, yes. you have to say. okay okay i was like that's basically summary of it so just like i said before that product design is all about solving problems and we solve those problems with pixels, except from the guys that are into customer service design or in other forms of industrial design. So we've solved the problems with pixels. So Web3 design is just basically solving the problems in Web3 space. So with the foundational knowledge of UI, principles of UI, the principles of UX, we need to understand UX because Web3 has a lot of UX issues. But with those foundational problems or foundations in check, what you now need is to understand the problems in the web3 space you need to use the products to understand the products then okay, so understanding the product you can actually solve the problem you can start designing the web3 space you yeah. can check out binance academy though i think i like binance academy i learned a lot from binance academy then you can check out these guys on youtube you call them um white paper white paper crypto they are more like an animation series like you just explain it crypto terms, whiteboard, whiteboard, I think whiteboard. Let me check for them and send one of their videos, whiteboard crypto. Okay, thank you. All right. All right, so the answer to the question is, to the question resources, that you can recommend to the UI UX designer in uh, trying to get into the Web3 field is practice, practice, and practice. And the whiteboard. Yeah, not necessarily practice, I... use the products. Use you the can product. start with finance, your conventional centralized exchange, then you can move into the DeFi space because if they are designing, I see a lot of people telling them that, okay, they want to learn Web3, but what they are designing in finance, they are designing. You are most likely not going to really sit in well in Web3 space because Binance is heavily centralized. Start playing with products like Uniswap, Sushi Swap, Avi, Compound, playing with Spirit Swap, playing with a lot of products. You earn, you get to Trader Joe. Yeah, a lot. I really can't name a lot. Those Check are what I want to, to, to mention actually. Oh, okay. There are a lot. Check DeFi polls. Um, type out the five posts on you on uh, let me try and check, search for the link. So right. let me see the five polls. You get to see a lot of those um, of those protocols in their separate categories. So this is the five polls website. You can easily like check a lot of stuff on them. Then there's the filama. Although the filama might be a bit tricky for you to understand but it does a good job at it. So it's just basically giving you the different protocols and like they just give a list, say, okay, our lending protocols, we have about 500 lending protocols. So Marina block, uh, Solana blockchain, and on the um, Ethereum blockchain, blah, blah, blah. So you just go into them and open the product and get to see how the product is like. So it's still you experiment lending products. All right, thank you very much. Let me be quick with questions before Murphy runs away. Okay, so the next question is, what, were, what are the first steps to take in the Web3 market? Understanding the product. Understand, okay, you, you kind of already said that. Okay, so the next question is, is there a 
Okay, thank you. I already, you already ex explained that one. Let me move to the next. Is Web3 and blockchain the same thing or do they differ? Because I am kind of confused. Web3 is the internet running on the blockchain. Web3 is the internet running on the blockchain. Can you explain a little bit more on what blockchain exactly is? For mm -hmm. the okay. So, <laughs> This one is a very tricky because it's a very tricky something to explain. Because if I'm explaining the blockchain, I'm have to explain heavy on the technology side, which I don't think I might do justice. But if you want to try and bail me out here, yeah? or I should continue. Ah, continue. Me I did help. I, I think that <laughs> that bag was was the humble bag. Okay, so I, I, basically, I, I, yeah. Basically, like I might be, I might not do justice to this really because this is heavy on the technology aspect of things, not necessarily design. But the blockchain is more like a collection of little networks or protocols scattered across that share similar data, similar info, and that is controlled by individual users. And network and, in, and the information basically can be shared across those interconnected messy micro mini computers or mini chips and can be accessible to all at the same time. I, I don't know if I did justice or if I made you not understand as much, but that's like one of the easiest ways I think I can explain it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is, I think you have to do some more research on what blockchain is for the person that asks that question if you really really want to have an in-depth understanding of it to understand the blockchain is heavy on the technology aspect you can do a lot of reading on it though but it might confuse you more it's better to meet a dev that works with like especially on the back end like solidity and you like really digest what blockchain is for you. i have my personal dev his name is to be and i have like the best dev i know his name is philip once i have any issues or things concerning to me or some terms i can easily run to them you can meet me i can give you their numbers but they, they charge consultation fee so okay okay so for those of you that want philip's number you can slide into his dm on twitter to get the number okay so one last question okay is there a set of curated resources or guide to learning about the blockchain space that is swapping, liquidity pool, farming, stacking, so that one can know how to design in the blockchain space. Use the products. Web3, use, the... use the products. I gave you wide, uh, Whiteboard Crypto. They explain a lot of the terms. Swapping, pools, staking, these are all features. Just like you have in your fintech space, you have your sending money, you have your receiving, you have your buying, paying for services you have your buying at time it's still similar so these are services swapping just basically means trading or, or converting of one crypto to another in a decentralized manner and all of them are interlinked because for you to for you to swap there has to be liquidity so now one of the ways we broke out of centralized like exchange because centralized exchange gave you the ability to swap very quickly now because they control the token so for example your banks now you have a bank, everybody here puts money in their bank. If I want to collect, let's say, one million, for example, I don't need to, the bank doesn't need to say, okay, this is the one million that I said deposited, this is the one million I'm going to give back to him. No, they have a centralized treasury where, okay, I want one million, I collect one million from the treasury I give, I say, they just debit the numbers on my account saying, okay, minus one million and give me my remaining balance. But there's a treasury where they took that from. That's why people were always complaining that the money is not still being owned by you because it's being controlled by decentralized exchange. So the swapping thingy came to break that norm by providing a peer-to-peer -peer kind of means of exchange. But there was a problem, and that is for me to exchange, let's say, my USDT to BTC, I'm kind of selling my USDT. I need to have someone like buying USDT and that is willing to sell BTC to receive your BTC. So I would have to wait sometimes days before I can find someone who's willing to make that 
exchange. So hence the term liquidity came. Liquidity pool is kind of a job whereby all of us come together, we pack our money inside the pool. So, okay, everybody here, you bring your money, you put it inside your job. You don't bring your money, put it inside your job, put it inside the pool. Then if, for example, Murphy wants to exchange his USDT for BTC, they take from that pool and give to Murphy. But the advantage is for everybody that contributes into that adjoin, for every swap, there's a fee attached. The people that contributed to the pool get to earn from that fee. That because of the activities carried out on the pool. So you see the interlinking between liquidity pools and swapping. And a lot of all these other features are seen intertwined. For example, your staking. Staking just basically means dropping my crypto assets for the protocol that can be used to invest. And I get to earn either the token of the protocol or the token of the investment over time. There are other features. And the best way to actually understand it is to use it. And if you don't have the money to gamble with it, the best way is to just watch videos on, like, I love white water to be explain it like it's basics. Or you read a lot of articles, like go on Binance Academy. Binance Academy does a lot of just so explain a lot of stuff. Just type out the feature, swap, research on what swap is. Liquidity, for research on yield farming, research on what yield farming is, and you get a lot of insights. If you still have issues, you can come to my DM. But we're already able to digest it here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. That's the last question we have for today. And I want to say thank you for coming to teach us what you know. Um, <laughs> my pleasure again. Okay, okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> You can go and eat your rice now, Murphy. You can and, go and eat your rice. <laughs> Murphy has run already. That man does nice to eat. I to oh, hear food. All right. <laughs> to see food, sorry. Okay. <laughs> all right, no problem. Okay, everyone. That's it for today with Design with EU. You you guys can go subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you came in late, you can find the recorded version of this session on our YouTube. Search for Design with EU. The link will also be posted on the chat. If you go to the chat now, you, you should be seeing the link. You can follow us on our YouTube. And on our Twitter pages too, give us a follow. Our newsletters will be up and running now. We dropped our first newsletter. So you can go on Twitter and sign up. So you can start receiving our newsletter in your emails. And that's that. See you tomorrow, um, next week Sunday, with another speaker. Bye-bye, guys. Bye-bye. All right, now. Take care, guys. Catch you later. Yeah, Bye. thank you, guys. And the pleasure is mine. Take care. Bye. Good night. Please don't cut the call. Let's copy oh, all okay. the things. Please. Oh. All right. You guys can copy the links that were dropped by.